Okay. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. And I'm hoping you're enjoying our background. We are in Alaska right now. No, <laughs> yeah, we're not. See the trees? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Virtual background. Um, and today is the last day of July in 2022. <clears throat> it's July 31st. And our talk this morning is our thoughts or prayers. It's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> and so um, our, also our theme is that we are all one with God. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to open with a, a, an opening thought and affirmative prayer by Ernest Holmes. And it's entitled, I live in the life of God. And he says, all life is one life, just as every physical substance known derives from one universal energy, so there's but one life principle, which is God, in which we all live and from which infinite source our individual lives are drawn. If this one life is present everywhere, it's also within us. To say that the life of God is the only life there is means that my life is not only in God and of God and from God, it is God in and through me. If this were not true, I would have a life separate from God, which is unthinkable and impossible. But if it is true that the life of God is my life now, how wrongly must I have been thinking about this life? I have judged it falsely and condemned it unnecessarily and in every way, shape and manner in my ignorance, I have denied the very thing I should be affirming. So as an affirmative prayer, he writes, and you may say to yourself, uh, if you have muted yourself, there is one life and that life is God. That life is my life now. In God, I live and move and have my being and God lives in me and moves through me. I deny then that there is any life separate from good and I affirm every organ, action, and function of my physical body is animated by the divine life that created and sustains it. It is this life that is circulating through me now in happiness, in harmony, and in perfect rhythm. I am one with the whole. Therefore, I say to my mind, you are to live and think and feel this truth until it is spontaneous and natural. And when you say, God is my life, you are to know that the entire life of the divine perfect presence is now flowing through you. I affirm this today. The life of God is the only life there is, and that life is my life now, complete and perfect. And so it is. Beautiful. Beautifully said, too. Thank you. And so um, <clears throat> before, before you say something, we have been talking the past two, two um conversations here about prayer, affirmative prayer. Mm -hmm. And and this is really a continuation about that and, and all of the co complications or questions we have about it when we don't see results immediately. Yeah, the idea came to me some time ago when a, a person at work said to me, are, are you married? And I said, yes, said it's complicated. <clears throat> and they said, oh, really? It's not going well. I said, no, actually, I'm married 35 years. We love each other. We get along really well. That's complicated. You know, it's not simple. And, you know, life is complicated. And that doesn't make it good or bad. It just is. And if you think it isn't complicated, you probably are missing some things. And so, but when we talk about prayer, what makes it complicated is that we are, we're, in, we're involving ourselves in a conversation with the invisible with something we haven't seen, something that we understand, we think, uh, and we can't necessarily explain, and a lot of other people don't agree with and haven't seen. That's complicated. And, and if you think it isn't, then listen to your own prayers. And one of the, the prayers that I've often heard uh, people say is, I'll say, okay, I know God in me, working through me, is me, it can be done, it's being done, it's done now, and I'm so grateful. And then they walk away and say, I hope that works. <laughs> and they've just, in their own, without realizing it, they've just undone. They okay. watch the whole thing fall apart because there is the undoing that goes on in, in another part of our brain. And that's really what we're talking about today. And part is the, the part of us that undoes, the part of us that says, I, I'm going to do a treatment. I don't know if it works. I'm going to do a prayer. I hope it works. Uh, and I want this person to get better, but they're probably not going to. 
And so that, that conversation, that subtext does set the stage for the consciousness that is transforming. And one of our practitioners says, you can't lose with the stuff we use. What I like about that is it's an affirmative statement. You can't lose. And I think the problem is that we often feel like we've already lost when we do prayer. Mm -hmm. And because we're coming from a place of loss rather than of success or as, as a place of win, we do the prayer almost affirming the loss. Like I'm doing this prayer because everything is terrible. I'm doing this prayer because this person is dying. This is not going to work out for them. So it's really a death prayer, isn't it? No, we want to do a life prayer. Whatever it is, you want to get through the obstacles in your own mind that are having you believe that it is complicated, not in favor of a good outcome, but in favor of a negative one or maybe nothing at all. In, yeah. uh, I'd like to jump in here, but yeah. see, we say that our, our thoughts are prayers, that our, our thoughts are, are things, uh, and and we believe they are an energy, and they're, so it's not a no thing. Anything you think, we said, well, nobody heard it, so it doesn't matter what I think. Yes, it does matter what you think. Your thoughts are things, but uh, they do not manifest immediately. What manifests is the tendency of your thinking the the that trend of it because certainly if every thought we thought manifested we would know it wouldn't we mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've all done this affirmative prayer and seen results immediately and i am really tickled when that happens and a lot of our students start out with manifesting parking spots close to where they want to go and that's a great thing because they can see wow this is definitely happening more often than chance what i so, love about that one is you're creating a space for yourself right you're creating a space for the idea to become real exactly and you're, you're practicing and um so there's nothing wrong with doing uh, affirmative space. prayers for things and parking spaces and things like that um but what we need to know is really what manifests is consciousness. Yes. Not the magic words that we teach you to say. I mean, we don't call them magic words, but some people think that they're magic words and a magic formula that we teach to do this affirmative prayer. That's not what does it. What manifests is the tendency of your thought. Mm -hmm. And if you actually sat down and um, kept track of your thinking, and we do this sometimes with students, have them keep a log of how many times they catch themselves thinking Maybe positively no, can't, about their future won't. and how, how much they spend thinking negatively. Because, and by negatively, I'm talking about fear thoughts, uh, lack thoughts, not enoughness, I'm not enough, I don't have enough, fear of the future, fear of the present. Uh, those, those are the ones that manifest more of that. And so I, I, I took a look at how many minutes a day and a minute is a long time. Sixty. Mm -hmm. You can think a lot of thoughts in 60 seconds. Right. And at our age, you'll forget many of them, but that's it's okay. But uh, there are, and in eight and a half hours, there are a thousand minutes. A thousand minutes that you have to think all day long. What percentage of those would you say are positive, optimistic, that when you think them, you feel good? Or are they fear, dread? Um, I, hope is even a little bit negative because hope kind of means you really don't really expect it to turn out well. Right. Werner Earhart says, <laughs> or else you wouldn't need hope. Werner Earhart says, hope is what you have when you don't have a plan. When you don't have a prayer. Yeah, I hope it works. <laughs> when yeah, you don't okay. have a prayer. Yeah. Which is why you don't say at the end of a prayer. And it is done. At least I hope so. Now, you know. it is human nature for us to think about our problems because we're looking for solutions. Yeah. And so when everything is great, we don't think about it that much because we're not trying to solve a problem. We're not to trying to come up with solutions. So it is our natural tendency to think more about our problems than about everything we have to be gratitude, uh, grateful for. Well, one of the primary functions of our brain is to sort information, stack that information in, relative, in relevant places to be able to be accessed for survival. And so the brain is always looking for, am I in danger? Am I safe? Am I, am, are things going to go okay? And so it is set up to do that. But we could also use that brain to say, are things okay? How okay? What makes them okay? Don't I like the okay? Don't I even like more than that? We could head in that direction. What, what, what you're also talking about, and we've used this analogy before, and I'm going to use it again today, is we're talking about what happens when you start moving a boat. When you start to, to your motor on the boat, it takes a while to get the boat to move 
because it takes a lot of energy to get it to move through the water. What happens after a while is it creates a wake. And that wake is the tendency of the energy of, of the direction that you're going, pushing the boat in that direction. There's a tendency for the universe, if you will, to now collude with you or to agree with you to move in that direction. But something if else, you still if you turn the motor off, you would still go forward right. because of that weight. But what else happens, which is interesting, is once you once you make that decision and you're really on that track and you add acceleration, which is you add enthusiasm, you add energy, you add visualization, you the boat actually lifts up off the water and it's going to cross the top of the water, not not beneath the water. And so what you can do eventually is you can get above the resistance. You can get above that which is slowing you down. It takes less energy and you can move more quickly. But you have to be willing to entertain that this is more than something you hope for, but that this is something you know, you believe in. That's what we talked about. And you're moving in the direction of. Right, last week we talked about the argumentative stuff, which I like because we argue a lot, but why don't we argue in favor of ourselves? And you need to argue in favor of the outcome so that the wake has a chance to, to push you forward. The other part of that is it's, that I like this, the wake of consciousness will push you forward even when you change your mind sometimes or lose hope. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. I know you've had the occasion of being hopeful about something because you have done everything you can and you're feeling good about it. And then you change your mind or you decide that maybe it won't work. And all of a sudden that wake pushes you a little further and you realize it is working. So uh, to elaborate on the metaphor, when you are just thinking about what you don't like in your life or what you're afraid might happen in your life, that is like, uh, I, I would want to say going backwards from where you want to go, but boats don't do too much in reverse. So I, I had the idea, it's like kind of going in circles, the boat mm -hmm. going in circles, you'll never get to where you want to go if the boat is just going around and around and around in, in circles like we do with our problems. Mm -hmm. We often go around and around. And I also would like for you to notice how you feel when you are thinking uh, like anticipatory. I anticipate good things happening to me, good health, good finances, good relationships. How does that make you feel when you think about that and when yeah. you visualize it? You're, it? It makes me feel wonderful. And so that's I know that's also very good for my body because my whole body is responding to my thoughts and my feelings. Conversely, when you're worrying or thinking about your worst fear, uh, it does not feel good. And so that is a matter of fact, and your whole body it produces chemicals you don't want to have going on. Mm -hmm. And so it's helpful to use your feeling state as a little reminder, a little tug uh, of the saying, oops, you know, I think you're spending more time thinking about what you don't want than what right. you do want. Uh, so that's a clue to if, for your thousand minutes of saying, what am I thinking? Because I want to talk a little bit more about what is this thing called consciousness? Uh, it's not your conscience. Uh, that's your the little tugging on you when you think you might mm -hmm. uh, have done or want to do something that doesn't meet your values. So it's, it has nothing to do with your conscience. It's your consciousness which in, is in more than your brain, it is your mind, and that mind that is connected with God's mind. So it includes your connection with God. So we say that really what outpictures or demonstrates is your consciousness. Now, as you study, read, believe, understand that you're really one with God, so you have to be good. I mean, you might think what you call bad thoughts, but you you are good because you're a part of God. Uh, good is another word for God. Uh, in, in German, the word for good is gut, and the word for God is Gott. <laughs> They're very close. Mm -hmm. Gott gut. <laughs> but at any rate. And some people will say good God. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so we want to we want to work on our consciousness more than we want to learn a form of prayer. We want our consciousness to be one of union with the divine, with God knowing that it is in you as you, is mm -hmm. you, and, and that you have working for you all the power that is God's. You can see consciousness <clears throat> if you look carefully at, at the, uh, the energy that's being spent in favor of the thing that you want to see happen. It is the energy that ignites. It is the, the uh, consciousness is neither the boat nor the motor, uh, nor the key, it is the intention that the individual has that operates all of that and moves it in the direction you want to go. And so what is the intention and how strongly do you believe that that intention 
needs to be realized or can be realized. Now, a piece of that that I love, and we've talked about it many times before, uh, is that we get stopped when we can't see how a thing could work. And so we're constantly with, well, yeah, this is what I'm affirming that I have a million dollars. And then two seconds later, we're thinking, yeah, and I have no way to get it. And so you've just affirmed that you're not going to have it. And so what we really want to do is to allow ourselves to not have to figure a thing out for it to be real. And what I love to say to myself is, this is mine, I claim it, and how it happens is a mystery. And right. I'm, and I'm and willing to have it be a mystery. Uh, because if I have to explain it, I will probably under explain it or explain it smaller than it could possibly be. Uh, how many times have you in your explanation underestimated or made a thing smaller rather than made it bigger? Right. So the only question you want to address with this is, uh, is what? What you want? And you stay totally away from all the other mm -hmm. questions like who, what, where, when. You know, so even people who, who are praying for the perfect partner, do not put a specific person in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you want is your highest and best. And often we treat for your highest and best. And that means uh, saying an affirmative prayer. And often, if you don't know what is best for you, treat for your highest and best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but, but you don't, do not concern yourself at all with how it will happen who is involved, who makes it happen, when it will happen, where it will happen. That is none of your business. You just release it and allow the universe to attract all the people, places, and things that are necessary for that demonstration, we call it. It's mm -hmm. a demonstration of a prayer. So moving in the direction that you want to see a thing happen, allowing consciousness to move you in that direction, and not being willing to have obstacles interrupt that. And so you're committed to an idea that you believe to be valid and, and important. And now what you're saying is, and this is true now, because in time and space, whatever you declare in mind is already does exist. The question is how you're going to bring it into, and you don't often know how to bring it into the world the way you want to be, bring it in. I'm impressed again and again with the numbers of times I want to solve a problem. I am working on the problem. And someone else that's not even connected to me bumps into me with the solution. Right. Yeah. And so what's clear is I don't have to know the how. Uh -huh. I only have to be willing to say, I'm willing, I'm, I'm committed to this outcome. I'm, I'm committed to this happening. And it's happened a lot of times. We were driving through Wallace, Idaho, you know, and, and we didn't have a lot of money at the so time. When we first got married. Yeah, when we first got married, we were traveling to Idaho and uh, we saw a house for sale for five thousand dollars and uh, we, this is oh, it was a little village that had been Wallace, a silver yeah. mine in the yeah. village a little town that had been involved in silver mining and the silver mines had closed so people left there was not much uh industry or work jobs and so the houses were unbelievably cheap so we bought a house on the way to Coeur d'Alene with, and a, with for, a credit card with a credit card for five thousand dollars <laughs> Uh, we never lived in the house. We never put a dime in the house. We never fixed the house up. Uh, we have such security. Yeah, but we had we had a house in Idaho. Should we need it? And then we sold the house in Idaho for I think ten thousand dollars. No, twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah. So here, many years later. Yeah. yeah. So what are the chances? Five years later, something like that. But on this journey, looking for opportunity rather than saying, "My God, we're ever going to get there? Isn't this awful?" We had no idea that it was possible to be on our way to hopefully getting a new job, a new place to live, and everything was going to work out. And when I got there, of course, the job fell through. We didn't have work. It didn't work, but the, but the $5,000 house turned out to be a $25,000. We wow. made $20,000. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty That's pretty darn good. <laughs> in fact, I think- For a house we never lived in. <laughs> that's right. We need to plan more road, more, more road trips. Oh, but that house was security because we had so many unknowns yeah. in our life at the time. <laughs> but- um, let me see where are we time wise. It's about time to to no, wrap good, up. Well, I, I I did want to say this this business of monitoring your feelings. So when you notice that you're feeling down or pessimistic or afraid, uh, you can use treatment to turn that around, because you, sometimes you can't just switch to oh I'm feeling negative to I'm feeling positive, but if you use treatment and you remind yourself of those spiritual truths that you are one with god mm -hmm. and god wants only the best for you and that is happening right now you can switch the mood because remember what we're trying to change is consciousness 
And consciousness, again, is that tendency of your thought and beliefs and your connection with God. And as you do that and know that God is all good and we do not have a, job, a God that wants to punish us or have us suffer, then it helps get your consciousness to the place that you want. I see these stories all the time and then they make movies out of them of, of the person sees an individual across the room and says, that's the one I'm going to marry. That's the person that I love. Yeah. And if you were to say to that person and others have, what do you mean? How do you expect to do that? Don't you know? And then of course, by the movie un unravels, it doesn't just turn out that that one person knows it, but there's lots of other energies at play and it does work out to how, but you have to make the declaration. Who is it that you want to be with in consciousness? And would you be willing to be with yourself in consciousness? One of the reasons that many people don't get what they want in consciousness is because they don't bring their consciousness to the occasion. They actually don't believe enough in themselves to believe that they're worthy of the thing they're asking for. And so we really have to say, you know, I am worthy of this. And if I don't appear or always feel that I am worthy, it doesn't mean it's true. I am worthy. I, I'm, I can have the experience, even if I'm a good or not so good person, I can still have the experience. If God is in you, how can you be that? Yeah, really. But if you have to argue yourself into that, then, then argue. Uh, if you're going to have, have it be a good argument in favor of you. Okay, so... Um... I think that's about what we wanted to wrap up. Yeah. Shall we end with an affirmative prayer? Yeah, we can. And then we're going to play some music and then we're going to talk we for, are. for a couple of hours. <laughs> for those <laughs> of you that are joining us that don't know what we do, when after we're done with this, uh, we sign off and uh, we then have a wonderful conversation, which sometimes is even more interesting than the actual talk that we do. In fact, for me, it's a lot more interesting. So uh, if, if you're joining us for the first time, hang out afterwards. And the, and the music we're going to play, uh, you can also get on YouTube. So uh, let's start now with a closing uh, affirmative prayer. So I know right here and right now that there's one source of all life and it is all good and it is all God. All manifestation in the physical is an expression of this divine source. It lives in me. It lives in you. It lives in all of us. It lives everywhere all of the time. So it's simply for us right here and now, a matter of choosing. And I choose to know that all my needs are met, that my life is eternal, that everything I experience here on earth is for me, not against me. And I show great appreciation for my growth and even my struggles for my struggles are part of my journey. So I know that everything that happens is for my highest and best good. And I release this truth and we say together, and, and so, so it is. is, which is the translation of amen. Uh, another way of saying it is, so be it. <laughs>